Hey folks, this is Kalani. Season 4 of Dragonflight is right around the corner. It goes live on April 23rd, so we don't have too much longer to wait. The new season completely overhauls dungeon progression in terms of difficulty and rewards. We'll be revisiting all three Dragonflight raids. We'll be able to directly purchase gear, transmog, and other rewards. You can upgrade your legendary items to keep them relevant. And almost every outdoor world activity was updated to reward even better loot. There's a lot to keep us busy in the new season, so let's go through everything coming in Season 4 of Dragonflight. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. One of the largest changes coming in Season 4 is the dungeon difficulty overhaul. Everything is getting shifted towards being more difficult, but also more rewarding. This handy dandy chart explains it pretty well. So normal dungeons stay around about the same and they will be rewarding item level 460 in Season 4. Heroic dungeons are moving to where Mythic Zero dungeons used to be, so they will be about as hard as Mythic Zeros were in the past, and they're going to be rewarding item level 476 in the new season. This this makes queuable content more rewarding and heroic dungeons will actually have a place in your character's progression going forward. Mythic Zero dungeons are making the big jump to being about as difficult as plus 10 keystones were previously, which is a massive jump in terms of difficulty, but you won't have the timers or affixes to worry about, so you'll be able to progress through these harder dungeons at your own pace. The rewards are also significantly better. Mythic Zero dungeons are going to reward you with item level 4 93 gear so you don't have to do mythic plus to get some big rewards from dungeon gameplay and then mythic plus picks up after that with the usual timers affixes and scaling rewards there are also a lot of changes to the dragonflight dungeons like adding in checkpoints changing how important boss abilities and mechanics work a lot of special abilities for trash mobs have been altered or removed and generally the dungeons seem to be smoother and more streamlined in addition to those changes, the Dawn of the Infinite Mega Dungeon will also have a hard mode, so if you've conquered all of the dungeons on the new Mythic difficulty, but you don't want to head into the timed environment of Mythic Plus just yet, this will offer you an even greater challenge for better rewards. Dawn of the Infinite hard mode is supposed to be more difficult when compared to other Mythic dungeons, and will reward you with Hero Track Gear, which starts at item level 506 in Season 4, so you'll be able to get your hands on some pretty sweet loot in the new season, even if you don't want to do Mythic Plus Dungeons. Now, if you do want to do Mythic Plus Dungeons, there are some changes for Season 4 when compared to Season 3. Our dungeon pool will be made up of all 8 original Dragonflight dungeons, and this will actually be the first time that all 8 dungeons are together in a Mythic Plus pool, which is definitely a bit odd, but I am looking forward to revisiting these dungeons for sure. With the difficulty changes, we will also see lower keystone levels in general. Rewards are going to max out at plus 10 keys for this season, that's where you'll get the highest item level rewards, in your weekly vault, but they should also be about as difficult as plus 20 keys were previously, so the only thing really changing is the key number. When the affixes for Mythic Plus keys appear has also been changed. In Season 4 we'll see Tyrannical or Fortified on plus 2 keys, the next set of affixes appear on plus 5 keys, and then the last set of affixes will be on plus 10 keys. So that's something to keep in mind as you're pushing through the new Mythic Plus keystone levels in Season 4. We're also going to have yet another recolor of the Armadon mount for you to collect if you want to push your rating. This time it's an infinite Armadon for the Season 4 Keystone Master achievement. It's probably the best looking one so far in my opinion, but I am still disappointed that we didn't get some cool dragon riding transformations for Mythic Plus achievements. It's not just dungeons that we'll be revisiting though, Season 4 brings back all three Dragonflight raids with massively increased item level rewards. Each week one of the three raids will be awakened, significantly empowering all the bosses and monsters inside the raid, but they will also drop much better loot. Normal raid loot goes up to item level 502, heroic raid loot is going to drop up to item level 515, and then mythic raid gear can go up to 528. The currently Awakened Raid will also drop new tier set tokens. The tier sets themselves aren't really new, they were voted on by the community earlier in the year, so we will have one of the previous three tier set bonuses and appearances, but they will have higher Season 4 item levels, making them very powerful items no matter what. 
To check which raid is currently awakened or empowered, you can open up the dungeon journal and look for this special icon. Whichever raid has that icon is that week's awakened raid, and the rotation should be pretty straightforward, moving from Vault of the Incarnates onto Abarus and then to Amirdrasil before rotating back around. So this season gives you a chance to see some bosses you may have skipped over in the past, revisit some old favourites, and collect any missing items or rewards you may still need. It is important to note that the legendary items from Sarkareth and Farak can still drop in Season 4, so you can still get those legendaries if you haven't managed to get your hands on them yet. You can actually upgrade them in Season 4 as well, but we'll talk more about that in just a moment. There are also going to be some new achievements for the Awakened Season. If you complete all three Awakened Raids on normal difficulty or higher, you can earn the Awakening the Dragonflight achievement, which rewards you with the Voyaging Wilderling Mount, which has some pretty scary teeth, but hopefully that gets fixed before the season goes live. If you really want to push yourself in Season 4, completing all three raids on Mythic will reward you with a Mythic version of the achievement which unlocks portals for each Dragonflight raid, letting you teleport straight to the raid entrance. These teleports could be very useful for quickly returning to these raids in the future, to farm any missing transmog or mounts, but clearing each raid on Mythic is going to be quite the feat, especially with the raid rotation in place. Now you won't have to rely entirely on RNG to get your best in slot drops though, Season 4 also brings back the gear vendors that we saw in the Shadowlands Fated Season. We'll be able to purchase raid loot directly from any of the bosses from all three raids. This includes trinkets, weapons, rings, and even the very rare items like the Aberus Cloak. Those key items are all here just waiting to be purchased. These items also have a special upgrade track which lets you upgrade them all the way to a fully upgraded myth track piece of gear, so there aren't any real limits on how useful this gear can be. The vendor gear for Season 4 can be as powerful as any other drop, making it true best in slot gear. You can also buy a very special upgrade item from these vendors, the Scales of Awakening. There's one for the Evoker Legendary and one for the Farak Legendary Axe. These items upgrade your Legendary, increasing their item level and allowing them to be upgraded even further. So if you have your Evoker Legendary or the Axe from Farak, you can actually upgrade it and bring it into Season 4 using the Scale of Awakening and upgrade it even further using Flight Stones and Crests just like any other item. So your Legendary will probably still be your best in slot for Season 4. That also means if you haven't managed to get your hands on a Legendary yet, it is still worth putting in the time and effort because it will remain useful until the very end of Dragonflight. If you're more interested in transmog farming, there's also a vendor that just sells transmogs for every weapon in the raid and every difficulty or colour version for each weapon. These transmog items are cheaper than the actual pieces of gear, so if you really want to fill up your transmog collection, you can spend your bullions on transmog if you would prefer. This vendor is also going to sell the Shadowlands Fated Season Special Mount, Jigglesworth Senior, which has been unobtainable since Shadowlands ended. So if you weren't able to pick that up back in the day, you can grab that during Season 4 as well. Now, all of these vendors are using a new currency called Antique Bronze Bullions. This is actually the one part of Season 4 that we don't have a great deal of information about, which, with the season going live in just over a week, I have to assume that's actually intended at this point. We can see that they stack up to 20, which means we may be able to get at least 20 throughout the season, and with a wider array of available items to purchase, I imagine we will be able to get quite a few of these. I don't see the point in adding a transmog vendor, for example, and then just limiting limiting the booleans to just a handful. They did pop up as a reward from the weekly Mythic Dungeon event. That quest now seems to reward two booleans instead of its typical box of gear, so at least we know of one potential source, but that's about it. I assume we will have other ways to acquire booleans, either from completing dungeons, killing raid bosses, or maybe taking part in some of the new open world content, but at this point we might just have to wait and see. It's not just dungeons and raids though, there's updates to the outdoor world content in Season 4 as well. We'll have new Last Hurrah weekly quests to pick up and complete that guide you to a certain area of previous patches content. So you'll be asked to complete activities in the Dragon Isles, in Zaralek Cavern, or in Amirdrasil, depending on which area is empowered for that week. 
The Empowered rotation follows the Awakened Raid rotation, making it easy to keep track of. What is super cool about the rotation for Outdoor World content is that all of that area or patches Outdoor World content should also be Awakened or Empowered at the same time. So during the Dragon Isles week, the three original Outdoor events, so the Soup, the Siege and the Hunt, they should all be Awakened and drop better loot. As far as we know, this should also carry over to the World Bosses, so the Dragon Isles World Bosses should also drop higher item level gear during that week. That would mean while the Zaralek Cavern is awakened, the Zaralek Cavern World Boss should be empowered, the Researchers Under Fire event will drop better loot, the Farrakh Assaults will also drop higher item level gear, and then Time Rifts will be awakened as well. And then during the Emir Drusil week, everything in the Emerald Dream follows suit, so that would be the Super Bloom event, and the Aura Store World Boss will give you some big rewards. Now while awakened, any content that would drop the larger gear upgrades should drop veteran gear at item level 480, which can be upgraded up to 502, so you can get some pretty big upgrades from any awakened outdoor content in Season 4. Certain vendors also had their rewards increased, like the Time Rift vendors and the Dream Surge vendor that rewards the epic items. So there are even more chances to get your hands on some gear upgrades. I'm glad that they didn't forget about outdoor world content in Season 4 of Dragonflight, that was something that was notably left behind in the last season of Shadowlands, but everyone will have updated rewards to chase after this time around. Now looping back to those weekly quests, they can also reward you with a box of goodies that includes champion gear, gold and equipment upgrade materials, so that's probably flight stones and crests, so between the increased rewards from all outdoor content, the vendors and the weekly quest, you are going to have so many options for gearing up in Season 4, even if you don't want to hop into dungeons or raids. The other big reward from these weekly quests is your Season 4 Crafted Gear Spark. For Season 4 we'll be using Sparks of Awakening, which can be used to craft or upgrade your crafted gear to item level 489 to 502 baseline, and then you can use the new enchanted Awakened Crests to upgrade its item level to 515 using Worm Crests, or 525 using Aspect Crests, and as per usual that brings the maxed out crafted gear item level to just 3 item levels under a fully upgraded piece of Myth Track gear, so crafted gear and sparks will remain a very strong way to gear up through season 4, you'll just need to get your hands on that weekly spark by completing one of these weekly quests. If you look at the source of the new enchanted crests, they also come from the last hurrah weekly quests, making them even more important for enchanters to complete if you're wanting to try and make some gold with these enchanted awakened crests. It is worth noting that you can still complete the PvP weekly quests to obtain your spark, any quest which has the weekly awakened activity as a reward will give you a spark, but only the first quest you complete each week. You can see in the green text here it says you have not received your weekly spark for crafting this week, so which quest you complete is up to you, but you won't be able to get more than one spark reward per week. And of course we'll also have a new PvP season to progress through. Every source of PvP gear will have higher item levels, including the War Mode Vendor, the Honor Vendor, and the Conquest Vendor. There are also new seasonal rewards to chase after, like the Vicious Dream Talon Mount, and the Season 4 Gladiator Mountain Title. That's pretty much it for Season 4, but I think it's worth pointing out that while this will be the last season for the Dragonflight expansion, it's not the last content update we'll get. Patch 10.2.7 will go live sometime after Season 4, which introduces a new remix event where we can relive the Mists of Pandaria days and unlock a whole bunch of cosmetic rewards. There will be new story quests to get us ready for the War Within, and the dev team are still hiding some secrets for Dragonflight. So we're definitely starting to wrap up the expansion, but it's not over just yet. But that's everything coming in Season 4 of Dragonflight, so that's it for this video. What do you think of the big dungeon difficulty overhaul? Will you be more likely to try and complete the harder dungeon difficulties now that they don't have a timer? And what are you most looking forward to in Season 4 of Dragonflight? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.